Hey guys, what's up? So a brand new update has been released for Hearthstone. I actually made a video talking about the new changes. Most most of the cards are on the, on the Demon Hunter. You can check it down in the description below. And of course, we also have some new cards going on. So let's talk about those. Before I start talking about the cards and the ratings, I want to give a small briefing about how I'm gonna rate these cards. I, I was thinking about keeping the five star rating. I think it's, it's decent, but I'm gonna describe what I mean with each star. So for example, if I give a, a card one star, it means that it's a pack filler. So basically it means that uh, there's, there's no chance, it has no chance based on my awareness that it's gonna see any play. You might see this card in Arena here and there. If I give two stars, is an arena card, which means that uh, this card has a lot of potential in seeing play. Basically, if you draft it in arena, then it's a very good choice, but it has a very tiny potential on seeing play in, in constructed. Then we've got three three star cards, which I will call them experimental cards, which means that they have a chance. It's a 50-50 if they're gonna find a place in the meta. But of course, there's a chance that we're not gonna really see them. Then we've got the four car, the four star cards, which I call them versatile, which basically means this card has a lot of potential and it's easily fitted in many decks and situations. So it's a very strong card, and there's a high chance you're gonna see it. And then we've got the five stars cards, which I'll call on to include, and these are basically cards that. Uh, based on my opinion you're gonna see very often so let's start with the first card onyx mage scribe a six mana force nine card with a tag dragon on the first look this card seems uh, very strong when it comes to the stat line and we also have a spell burst mechanic now let me explain the spell burst mechanic so what it is that uh, once you play a card if you cast a spell, whatever type of spell, afterwards, you trigger the spell burst mechanic. It can only trigger once uh, in the card's lifetime, so if you play this card and you cast a spell, you will get two random spells from your class to your hand. If you, spell, if you cast another spell again, you will get nothing, because the spell burst has been used. So, it's like a, not a battle right, like a... Like combo effect, I don't know, something like that, but you get the idea. So anyway, this is a 6 mana, 4 9 card, very strong body. You would say that uh, for a 6 mana you would get a 4 8 or something, 4 7. There is a dragon, uh, and a, well, a druid, who is a 6 mana, 4 8 with taunt, and you also discover another dragon. This card is very strong and it always is play. This guy... Uh, I would think that uh, he's, a, he's an experimental card because it's not that strong but it's a neutral I'm always more indulgent with neutral cards because they have uh, more chances on seeing play instead of a card that it's only class specific and getting two random spells from your class is not a bad thing there is actually a card from a rogue which uh, gives you two spells from another class and it costs two mana so for a uh, just a spell that uh, you might gonna use anyway and you get two random spells I can totally see this card uh, being played on a um, dragon or like Highlander deck so I would give it 3 stars I think it may see some play next we've got first day of school so this is a spell paladin card cost 0 and it says add 2 random 1 cost minions to your hand so basically I actually took a look on uh, some of the 1 cost uh, cards and uh, actually most of the one cost cards uh, when it comes to class specific cards are pretty strong I mean uh, some from uh, Demon Hunter have already been uh, nerfed and are still seeing play but when it comes to neutral cards uh, most uh, suck balls so I think this card is uh, inconsistent getting two cards for zero no matter what it is even if it's uh, one mana or something it's pretty decent but there's a lot of RNG involved and I mean if you draw it on your opening hand in your mulligan it's decent but if you draw it on the late game there's almost uh, no use of it so 
I'm gonna give it two stars, which means that uh, you would be kind of happy to draw it in an arena, but on constructed, the chances of seeing playing is very low. Then we got Troublemaker, Warrior eight mana six eight, not the best of stats, but at the end of your turn, summon two three three roof roof roofian roofians that attack random enemies, roofians. The snitches. Fuck. I was actually thinking about this card, and the one card that comes in my mind is the multi shot from uh, Hunter, which is a four mana um, deal three damage to two random minions. And with multi shot, you got, you are guaranteed to hit uh, two minions. With this guy, some minions might go face, but the advantage is that if you play him on an empty board, you go, you get. You get 6-6 six, six stats and a 6-8 body, which is amazing, it's like, I don't know, 15 mana or something. And they also attack, they might attack uh, your opponent's face or whatever, or yeah, even if you just uh, play them for like for free, you just summon the 2-3-3s three, three, would be very strong. So, I think this card is uh, very strong. I'm not gonna say it's gonna be on to include it, but... I'm gonna take the more uh, secure approach and say that it's a four mana card. It's a it's very versatile and I believe it's definitely gonna see some play as well. Very strong card. Then we got devolving missiles. So as you can see right here, there is a two two colors around the card, which means that uh, some cards are gonna be playable from uh, two classes simultaneously. We had the expansion like this in the past, and this, if I'm correct, if I'm not wrong, is a shaman and mage, and this spell reads: shoot three missiles and random enemy minions that transform them into ones that cost one less. Hmm. So this is pretty funny. It seems like uh, it's like the arcane missiles, but uh, it also transforms the any the other minion. I mean, it's an RNG card. You cannot never you never know for sure. Sometimes um, there are some cards that they are very strong or they have a very strong effect and if you devolve them for one mana or whatever they become uh, significantly um, worse, especially nowadays most cards have bad cry effect, effects so usually devolving a card is uh, stronger than it used to be but uh, still it's an RNG card, also I don't know if, if you shoot a missile and you hit a minion is there a chance the second mission is going to hit against the same minion? So, for example, if you hit a, a 2 or 1 mana minion and you continue hitting it, hitting it you, all, you almost get the no value, maybe. So, I think it has some potential. I, I don't think it's uh, something amazing. You, you, don't, you have no control over the missiles. So, I'm going to give this card 3 stars. Experimental stuff. Next, we've got Lighting Bloom. I really like this uh, design. I think that uh, maybe <laughs> the golden card of this is gonna be awesome. So this is a druid and a salmon card. So actually you get the overload as a druid. That's very interesting. This is the first time or ever. Gain two mana crystals this turn only, overload two. So this is basically like inner raid. And inner raid gave you two mana crystals just this turn. Imagine how amazing inner raid was. And right now it's uh, one mana crystal and it still sees a lot of play. So this card, I think is very strong, I'll give it 4 stars, very versatile, especially since it's a dual card for dual classes, I think there's a very high chance to see it played here and there. I do believe that some cards are gonna perform better on certain classes than others, those are dual cards, so this is definitely gonna perform very well on Druid as of now, with the... Uh, how do you say the, this deck that uh, overgrows and stuff, you get the ramp mana and stuff and it's crazy, this deck is crazy, I mean it's crazy. So this card is uh, perfectly fit over there. So I give it 4 stars, very versatile. The overload, you never really, it's not a big of an advantage. And sometimes, lately, shamans can make a good use of the overload, so there's that. Next we got called Neophyte, Neophyte will excuse my English, I don't know how the fuck do you call it. So it's a neutral card, 2 mana, 3-2, but try your opponent's spells, cost one more next turn. 
These days the games are uh, mana ramp, mana ramping, uh, playing on curve and stuff is very, very, very important. Most games end by turn 10, so what I'm trying to say is that if you have a 2 mana cost card, you want to play it on turn 2. It's very important. If you draw it, then you have to play it on turn 2. If this 2 mana cost card doesn't give you any significant advantage in the later game, and it doesn't give you any advantage on the start of the game, then there is no use of it. This is uh, useless. Even if you play it, let's say, on uh, turn 7, 8 or 9, you might make your opponent uh, spells uh, cost one more and he dispatches this card and he's good to go. So I, I think there was a card that uh, Sorcerer's uh, something, like a uh, Sorcerer's Apprentice, but uh, in an evil manner. The card, I think it was 3 mana, 3, 2. Your opponent's cost one less. I think it exists. I'm gonna check it later. This card saw no play, and I don't think this card's gonna see any play. So, this is a one star card, pack filler. Let's go. Goody 2 shields. Paladin card, 3 mana, 4, 2. Divine shield, spell burst. Gain divine shield. So, this card is really interesting. It has divine shield. I like divine shields because they have the ability to absorb a lot of damage. So, actually, I think it's one of those um, effects that uh, if you know how to play the game, it's very strong. Um, now we actually had, let me check my notes, Cthulhu's Chosen, a 4 mana 4 2 with Divine Shield. This is exactly the same. Of course, Cthulhu's Chosen used to give plus 2 plus 2 new Cthulhu. But still, it was a very strong card. The Divine Shield, I said, is very strong. Unless your opponent has a lot of low minions and he may attack, dispose a body to destroy your Divine Shield. Even in that case, if he. He, destroy, uh, he sacrifices a 1-1, one, one. you are basically a 4-3. This is the worst case scenario, a 4-3, which is okay, especially if you consider the spell burst. But 90% of the time, your opponent does not have a 1-1. One, one. So in order to destroy your shield, he has to sacrifice something bigger, like a spell or a hero power. So that's why Divine Shield is very strong. This is a 3-mana 4-2 that has Divine Shield at when uh, in the instance you play it and next turn if you actually attack uh, or somehow your divine shield destroyed you can re-trigger it with spell burst I think spell burst is just a bonus honestly and now with the liberals and stuff that cost uh, 2, 1 mana or even 0 it's very easy to trigger the spell burst so I like this card however Paladin struggles to have an identity uh, Right now, I think you only see some Murloc stuff some, and some Librams, but I don't think they are performing very well. I can down them whenever I play with them. <laughs> Except from the Murlocs, oh my goodness, this new Murloc deck with the Dragon Lord, that's very strong. So yeah, I think this is a decent card, but uh, the class is lacking. Of course, I don't know the new cards that are gonna come around uh, in the next days, but I'm gonna give this guy... Three stars, so it's an experimental card. It might see some play, it might not. Next we've got Diligent Note Taker. <laughs> two mana, two, three, summon card, return the spell to your hand. So basically you play this and then you play Lightning Bloom, and then you play Lightning Bloom, and you get four mana for this turn, for turn two. How you like that? <laughs> so this guy is uh, very versatile. You know where I'm getting there. Which means that you can play him on turn 2 and he's a 2-3. Decent. It's okay. Actually, Summon right now doesn't have a lot of 2 drops. I mean, yeah, it has a 1-2-2 two, two that deals 1 damage to everything. I don't know if it has... A... Basically, it lacks any decent 2 drops. So this guy is a... Okay, 2 drop for turn 2. And he's pretty decent when you play him on other turns. Especially if you're gonna use... Um, a spell or something like that. Even, even on turn 2 you can use uh, 0 mana spells for a summon. So if you think about it, it's kind of like 2 mana 2 3, gain a spell or something like that, a specific spell. Maybe like discover, maybe a little bit worse, but it's kind of like draw a card or something like that. So if you actually have a concrete deck which you know how to play and you know what you want to create, Getting a spell from this guy is very strong, because it's like drawing the same spell twice. 
So I think this guy is very versatile and that's why I'm gonna give him four stars. No, this is four, excuse me. <laughs> and I will expect him to see him in matches to come. Perhaps even play him. Next we have transfer student. This has different effects based on which game board you are on. Damn. I don't know how it rates card, it's very interesting, very strange. It goes to show how crazy Blizzard is and uh, how much you must not take seriously Hearthstone. Of course, there are people playing for money, which is crazy. Anyway, I cannot rate this card. Question mark. 4 mana 2 5. Rexit Tutor. Spell burst, steal to damage to all other minions. This is a very interesting card. It has a nice board clear, nice design. <laughs> But uh, the stat line is uh, very basic, pretty, pretty bad actually. The spell burst makes up for it, but uh, you basically cannot play it on turn 4, you have to play it on turn 5 or 6, and then have a 1 or 2 spell mana. This can happen, then you deal damage, if you are lucky enough you can only hit opponents, this stays as a 2-3. It's pretty situational, because you have to be a mid a control deck basically and you have to face an aggro deck and you have to have a one or two spells it seems like a priest card honestly or maybe like a druid because druid lacks any draw removal but overall it's not as amazing we have to know the new cards and stuff i'm gonna give this three stars it's a experimental card next we've got nature studies i think this Discover a spell, your next cost one less. So it's basically something like discover a spell for zero mana. This is amazing. This is, Druid is getting stronger and stronger. I think Druid is always one of the best class ever. Uh, what can I say about this card? There is uh, this guy that uh, discovers a choose one, the spell, that costs mana. With this one you can discover spells that are choose one or whatever. And they also, your next spell costs one less. So sometimes you can play this on uh, uh, turn 1 or something, or turn 2, and then uh, you can uh, ramp, you basically can use overgrowth, for example, on turn 3 or something like that. If actually this reduction stays for the next turns, but probably it stays based on the context. I think it's very strong, I give it 5 stars. 5! Because I think it's easily... Uh, playable on every druid deck, everyone likes discover stuff, versatile plus uh, very strong, uh, 5 star cards, let's move on. Next we got Rattlegore, I like the design, this is a 9 mana 9 9, Rusham this with minus 1, one minus 1, so basically if this guy dies, he resummons as an 8 8 and a 7 7. This is very nice, I like the concept, but playing a 9 mana on turn 9, or later, that does nothing, doesn't help you. So unfortunately, although this guy is pretty nice, if he had Ras, if he had uh, Ras, it would be very strong actually, I think, yeah. If he had Taunt, maybe, there is one guy that's 7-7 uh, seven, seven right now, which when he dies, he summons another 7-7, seven, seven, but he has also Taunt. And this guy only saw play mostly on Druid decks, because you could play him with the... Um, Strengthening numbers, the quest. But this guy is a, is a warrior, you have no use for him. I guess only if you get a lucky and you give him brass or tone, but he's very easily disposable. He can be silenced or polymorphed or something like that. I like the concept, I like the design, but unfortunately, it's a weak card. I'm gonna give it two stars. You're gonna happy if you draft it in arena. Next, we've got one fifth. 1-1-1-2 one, 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 combo, discover a mage spell, and it's actually both a mage and a rock card. So, very interesting, suddenly there's also combos for uh, mates, up, up, uh, except from the typical combos that he I used to make. Um, I like this card, uh, it's not something spectacular. From the past I've, le I've learned and realized that uh, one cost uh, minions are always strong. This is actually one of those cards that you can get with the uh, first day at school, but it's totally random. Covering a mage spell is also very nice. I actually think this would be more useful as a rogue, 
because uh, you get a whole another a whole other pool of spells and you can also use the secrets from uh, the rock to trigger uh, your black zone or the one mana four guy I always say that uh, I never lie but I never tell the truth you can get this guy and um, so getting secrets from mates is decent I think this card has a lot of potential decent I'm gonna give it four stars because um, it's very versatile that's why I give it four stars and of course it has a uh, more chances to see play both on mates and or rock. So very strong. Keep keep an eye on this card. And then we've got Shadow White Glow. 3 mana 3-3. Three, three. Green and this is actually Hunter and Druid, if I'm not wrong. Choose one. So suddenly Hunter also has a choose one effect. Amazing. Give beasts in your hand in your deck plus one plus one or transform into a copy of a friendly beast. So, really nice card, I like the colors. I always like choose one effects because... Oh, just... I always like the choose one effects because... Um, I like versatile cards, that's why I give them four, four stars. <laughs> and this guy, so let, let's uh, think about it. Let's say you draw this on your opening hand, on your mulligan or whatever. And you play him on turn three. You just give plus one, plus one to your other beasts. Do you have any beasts? As a druid? No, you don't. So, you're not gonna be really happy as a druid, but it's still okay. As a, as a hunter, yes, you do have a lot of beasts, so you're gonna be extremely happy. We actually had, um, I don't remember the guy, 2-2 two, two, two mana, that go, gives you your minions plus 2 plus 2, he was amazing so strong, so. And there are many beasts, trust me, for hunter. The other way is that if you play if you play this card on like I don't know later turns like uh, seven eight nine or even ten, and you have the option to uh, first let's say you are druid and you play winging guardian and then you play this stuff this guy, boom unless the other guy has a total uh, only the nine mana destroy everything silence everything from priest, your opponent is fucked. Wing guardian is very strong card. Two wing guardians are extremely strong. In the other sense, let's say you play Highlander Hunter and you play the fucking, uh, how do you say, the 7 mana 2-4 that summons uh, King Crash? This guy, because you're a Highlander deck. And then you play this also and you get 2 crashes. So you can deal 16 damage like that. If you have more stuff on the board, it's almost GG. So I already can think about 2 instances in which this guard is extremely strong. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that this is a 5 star five star card, it's an auto-include, uh, it's not that uh, it, has, it has some planning or like uh, deck creating stuff, but um, it's actually that strong that you're gonna be happy to create a deck based on this card alone. And of course we haven't seen everything that is more to come. So yeah, really strong card. I'm kinda afraid of it, perhaps it's gonna be pretty OP, I mean... These days we already see a lot of nerds, especially with Devon Hunter, so you never know, but this card is very strong. So yeah guys, that was uh, the cards as, as so far, about uh, 15 cards or something. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to follow me on Instagram. I upload stories, uh, posts and general stuff about Hearthstone and maybe other games also. I play another other couple of games also. Uh, I have been playing uh, Hearthstone 5 years now and I always like to create and talk about decks and stuff and cards so that's why I decided to start uploading videos so supporting me is gonna help me a lot and I will be thankful for that guys and of course uh, you can also drop a like, maybe subscribe and I'll see you guys on the next video, peace!